What is acanthosis nigricans? Acanthosis is thickening and darkening of the skin caused by high insulin levels. Since insulin is inside the body, there is no way to reduce the acanthosis except by lowering the insulin levels. Since the back of the neck is so easy to see, most of the time acanthosis nigricans is first discovered by a parent or family member. Acanthosis nigricans is not contagious and is not due to poor hygiene. Many parents mistake it for dirt. Since it isn't dirt, it should never be scrubbed off. Creams will not remove it. It can't be covered up. And most of all, don't go to extreme measures to try and remove it. We now know that acanthosis nigricans is caused by higher than normal levels of the hormone insulin. Skin cells react to these high levels of insulin by changing the level of color or pigment in the skin, but usually in skin that is always being stretched or rubbed. One frequently asked question is whether weight loss will remove acanthosis. Here is a teenage girl who lost 20 pounds over six months. Judge for yourself whether the acanthosis improved or not. What is insulin? Insulin is a hormone that the pancreas makes to help get your blood sugar from the blood into the cell where the sugar is turned into energy. Blood sugar is the body's fuel, like gasoline is fuel for a car. Why does your body have high insulin levels? You have inherited the tendency for your insulin not to work well or not be able to get the sugar from the blood into the cells. This is called insulin resistance. The more fat you have in your body, the more your insulin cannot do its job. So our pancreas makes more and more insulin to try to get the sugar from your bloodstream into the cells. Are high insulin levels dangerous? High insulin levels can contribute to developing diabetes, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol or extra fat in the blood. This is called the metabolic syndrome and eventually causes heart attacks and strokes. Some people get a little confused about insulin and blood sugar. High levels of insulin in the blood is not diabetes, although it is the first step towards the disease for most people. Diabetes is abnormally high levels of sugar, or glucose, in the bloodstream. What is type 2 diabetes? The simplest definition is high blood sugar due to the lack of enough insulin to meet the needs of the body due to insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is often present for years before type 2 diabetes occurs. After years of fighting against insulin resistance, the pancreas starts to give up or burn out. It is the time during this battle between the pancreas and insulin resistance that provides us an opportunity to try and prevent diabetes before it's too late. We do it by trying to reduce the resistance through exercise and weight loss. The actual diagnosis of type 2 diabetes is made by a simple blood test. The normal ranges for blood sugar are well known. Any random blood sugar level over 200 is a reason to see a doctor immediately. Any fasting blood sugar between 100 and 125 is considered a sign of possible pre-diabetes. As you can see in this chart, the rate of adult diabetes in children has skyrocketed over the past 20 years in South Texas. According to a recent report from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, Diabetes will occur in one out of every three children born after the year 2000. Unless something is done soon, diabetes is expected to occur in one out of every two children born after the year 2010. What are the chances of you or others in your family getting diabetes? This depends partly on your genetics, what you inherited from your parents, and partly on how much fat is in your body. 
You can't change your parents, but you can change how much fat is in your body. If you read a food label carefully, you'll see that the recommended daily allowance, or RDA, for calories in a healthy adult are set at 2,000. This number actually changes a little from person to person and based on age, but the label can be a tremendous help to us in measuring our calorie intake if we pay attention to it. However, few of us are able to track every calorie we eat, and many of us don't want to or even to try. But this is how it works. For every extra 3,500 calories we eat, we gain one full pound of true body weight. Often, this is mostly fat. Here's a practical, everyday example for you. Let's say you're a person who drinks an extra 200 calories each day, such as one 12-ounce regular soda pop, and eats an otherwise healthy diet. Did you know you can expect to gain one pound of extra fat in about two and a half weeks? Now, try drinking two regular 12-ounce soda pops each day, and you'll gain that weight in half the time. One area where we have gone astray is in the area of fast foods. About 1 in 12 American families eats at a fast food restaurant every day. The type of foods served are loaded with sugar and fat, and the portion sizes are almost always excessive. In this example, a typical Big Mac, supersized order of fries, and a 16-ounce regular soda is equal to over 1,500 calories. For many younger children, this exceeds their calorie requirement for the entire day. Ultimately, we are responsible for the choices we make in life, both for ourselves and for our children. This is especially true in regards to the food choices we make. It is unfair to lay blame on others. It's our job to make smarter choices for ourselves and for our families. Don't get caught in the supersized trap. Exercise is just as important as healthy eating. Exercise is how you turn extra fat into muscle. Muscle helps the insulin to work better so your pancreas doesn't have to work so hard. Everyone should exercise about 30 minutes a day, five days a week. What kind of exercise should you do? Almost all exercise is good for you. Pick a kind that you enjoy. Some ideas are walking, dancing, running, swimming, football, tennis, dance video games, basketball, and baseball. Kids like sweets, and sweets will always be a part of our lives. Unfortunately, we've lost sight of what is a normal amount of sugary foods and drink. Sweets should be used only for special occasions. Now, they are a part of everyday life for most U.S. children. Parents need to take the lead on controlling the intake of sweets. Unfortunately, many parents are just as caught up in this cycle as their kids. Many of us spend far too much time sitting in front of a television set consuming unhealthy, high-calorie drinks and snacks. Research has shown that more than two hours a day of television viewing and video game time causes obesity at any age. Now, let's review. You've learned that acanthosis nigricans can be a sign for a condition called insulin resistance. You've also learned that acanthosis nigricans is not diabetes, but that the person with acanthosis does have a greater chance of developing diabetes and every effort should be made to prevent it through lifestyle change. You've learned that insulin resistance is a serious problem and lays the foundation for developing illnesses like type 2 diabetes, among many other serious conditions like heart disease, high blood pressure, and strokes. And finally, you've learned that prevention of obesity, diabetes, and heart disease begins at birth. Parents must make changes that improve the health of their children. These changes include stopping sugary soft drinks, sport drinks, and excess juices, changing snacking habits, forgetting unhealthy fast foods, and exercising every day.